This is episode one of BT IndyCast, and I got the Moon Dogs. How's everybody doing? Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is kind of a take two of our interview, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. But anyway, Moon Dogs new CD coming out, new single coming out. CD is feeling pretty good. <laughs> but uh, oh, he wrote that down. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I'm sorry. No, we're that's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but we are feeling good, right? We're, I'm we're feeling ready. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the CD. Uh, we just talked about. It. I'm having a little bit of deja vu. Yeah. But we just talked about the CD will be here. Physical copies Tuesday. So they'll be for sale. You'll blow out of them super fast and have to reorder like Thursday. So. Oh yes. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be amazing. amazing. The greatest message that you can send me like Friday is I need another hundred CDs super yeah. fast. If we so, send them, yeah. uh, I'll get two hundred if we do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd for be sure. good. All right. Well, uh, the new CD. It, that's kind of what we're here going to talk about. But um, first off, we got Jason in the gray shirt, Austin, Matt, Cody. Drummer, bass player. I've asked this before, and it's going to be a lot of deja vu. <laughs> it's okay. But who wrote the who wrote the the lyrics for most of these songs on this new CD? Um, we like to kind of say that we all did. Is it one of those you're in rehearsal mode and everybody's jamming and somebody throws a line out? It's more or less like, uh. I, I think we don't approach it that way. We approach it more like sometimes I write a song all by myself, and then sometimes Cody might write a song right. all by himself. So we like just kind of yes, they kind of all brought their own songs in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and yeah. then instead of like getting through like who did this and that, we just you know Moon Dogs is all we kind of write. Just That's cool. Put it under the thing. Or if somebody's got a part that they just have the guitar part. We'll all sit down, and listen to it, and think of what's the best way to approach it. That's cool. So it's definitely group well, effort. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, yeah, always. Yeah, brought for out sure. like that, well, just get a sheet of paper and just crank it out the, right there that night and get all the lyrics wrote down. That's cool. Yeah. All These right. guys can knock out a song in like 10 minutes, Cody and Austin. That's really good. And then, <laughs> and it's, you know, no... Uh, the words aren't very good, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it works out, and, and Cody does a lot of the harmony and stuff. Uh, oh, yes. So, yeah. I mean, no, it's really cool. Yeah, I don't... I that don't. was a surprise for me, too, when we started recording. By the way, we're in Tooth by Studios, where we recorded the the CD, so that's a that's a cool thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome but, yeah, I mean, Cody was all over the background vocals. It was really good. Good, good song arrangement, and... Uh, which you know, like I guess I mean, like I told you guys, I love the the song "Come On." That's like my go-to song to jam out right now. So that's, oh my gosh, thank that's you. so awesome! Yeah, so well, thank you very much. We really appreciate that's, that. That's gonna be it's gonna be cool. I can't wait for everybody else to hear. It. I Man. I mean, like I'm one of those, you know, I'm a fan because I put it on Facebook. I was like, everybody's got to hear this uh, this new EP coming out. Awesome. That's great. Right. Right. Yeah. we sure appreciate that's it. Cool. Well, Jason, uh, you're kind of a new guy, I guess, if there's such a thing. Yeah. It was a three-piece for a while. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, J see, I already know the story. <laughs> Jason, you came in uh, to play drums for a bit. I did. And then uh, Cody comes in back to play in drums, and it was just like, hey, second guitar. So did you, you knew he played guitar, though, right? Or did you? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you knew I played, we just never... I Honestly, like, li like I knew you were at the music store, but, like, I didn't know, like, you could, like, what I consider play, right. uh, you know. That's awesome. No, yeah, we was really just friends, and, like, he was like, I play drums, and was, like, killer, and then he's like, I play guitar, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, killer. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know how it worked out, because he's, like, the perfect mesh for what we... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, your guys, oh, sure. your style, yeah, he fits the style perfectly. Oh, yeah. The tone and all that kind of thing. For sure. And for sure. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, uh, <laughs> what do you think, uh, if, if we had to pull in a, a genre... <laughs> <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> if we had to pull in a genre, what uh, uh, or wait, how is it? I like to say, if you were going to go open up for someone yes. on tour, yeah, dead or alive, huh? <laughs> 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 who would you like to? Who would you like to go on the road and open up with, or open up for? Garth Brooks, ninety two. <laughs> <laughs> the great. Well, I think that we. I think that we sound like. I think we sound most like the Grateful Dead and would like play that style. And it's kind of weird because I didn't really listen to the Grateful Dead until like 
J, the anthology of Grateful yeah, Dead. Yeah, really blood, tough, like yeah. I've heard like Truck and Casey Jones and yeah. like all the normal stuff, but never, you know, really got. Yeah, they have a, I mean, their catalog is ridiculous. And if you get into some of it, you'll say, I hate the dead for, yeah. you know, you'll always yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But then if you dig in, you know, it just depends. They, it, pretty versatile. But uh, I definitely will definitely say like when there's like a song that's like, well, that's, that's just, I don't know what they were doing. But I yeah. think that they do have moments of like every four songs it's like oh my gosh if they would have just like condensed it yeah. been, they'd been like the best hit band ever but I think anyway. they played so much that like yeah it would take ten good night or ten bad nights to get to one good night yeah you know? they didn't play every night I thought about that before I was like how can you put like seven nights a week like on the like how can you like sing after a while or like you're like they well, have to, it, luckily they play for like a half an hour in between singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of rest time. A lot of rest yeah, time. That's true. <laughs> Intermissions. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. I, you know, speaking of the dead, I mean, there's a lot of tone of uh, in the on the album that's like that. Re uh, you don't want to say like retro, but I mean, you guys are yeah. vintage guys, and and uh, that. Oh no, really... I like that. That's all I listen to. Oh yeah, so, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't listen to any. Uh... We're always talking about me and Jay uh, or whoever about guitar heroes and you know and mm -hmm. there's just not it's sad because the the top 40 doesn't have guitar in it anymore you know that whole thing but it's cool to see you guys writing new songs that's guitar based and rocking out and oh, that yeah. whole thing. Um, let's talk about gear. All right. So Austin, what do you play on the album? And I is it is it the the same gear you play live all the time? It is. Did, did you it, venture off at all or on the? It, no, no. <laughs> well, he, he used that Les Paul for like I think most of the stuff we did in here. <laughs> so uh, he's got that three thirty five. He he plays some too, but I think he just used that Les Paul the whole time. <laughs> 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 that was Cody. Well, kind of just, <laughs> Good job, yeah. Cody. Oh, but yeah, boy. black, uh, uh, black O eight uh, Les Paul custom, and it's actually just the regular custom. It's not like the you know uh, I think was it fifty seven. I think they were using yeah. the black ones. So, and it's got more of a it's it's in between a C and a U. I would say instead of the you know the. The, most of the customs I played have a, the thin, you know, right. 60s top neck, so. Yeah. I I play Les Paul a lot, and uh, some of the necks are just too thick. Oh, yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I, for what I do, I don't, I don't. Yeah. Know. And yeah. I looked into this one, and I, I like the neck on it. It's, yeah. I don't, I don't really know the technicalities of C and U and The difference that. in my 335, it seems, is. That's pretty thin. It plays, uh, oh, my 335 is way thicker than that. It, it's like, it's. <laughs> Uh, you just play. I mean, you can't play as fast, but yeah. I mean, it's 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 got a different feel to it. I guess I don't. It is hard to explain, kind of. My yeah. last pause a lot faster though. People are like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of amp did you play on the? Uh, a Rocker Thirty, a Orange Rocker Thirty. Yep, I've I've been playing that one since. Uh, well, since I've the day I've got it, I've never traded another amp. I think it's a oh, it's like a oh eight oh nine. It's actually the whatever the first year that they came out with Rocker Thirties, right? And I played them because a band. I don't know if they they might still be big, but uh, Blackberry Smoke was like the first live band I heard them play Rocker Fifties, and I was like, man, that's a killer. Uh, I think he's playing a Les Paul Junior maybe through it. Remember those? Remember that? Black Mary Smoke. They opened for ZZ Top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they came yeah, out yeah. there and did like a Yeah, home, yeah, home yeah. And we, cool. we went over to, awesome. me and Cody went over to Huntington literally watched them open, like paid ZZ Top ticket prices, watched them open and left. So, Jay, <laughs> what'd you play on the record? I played a Gretsch Tennessee Rose, and I think I used a Super O, a Super o Westbury on, the, on one song uh, through a Fender Deluxe Reverb, a Blackface reissue, and uh that Tennessee Rose is that the one? Is that the one you've had for a long time with the leather? Oh uh, no, it's a. <laughs> I've had it probably. Well, June will make a year. Okay. That I've had the guitar. Do you still have the one with leather on it? No, it's it's long gone. Did you ever see that? Yeah, I did. It was killer. Yeah, yeah. It was, was cool. it a duo jet? It was uh, what they call. You know how Gretsch has all the numbers. I think it was uh, fifty-one oh, or something. Okay. Anyway, the Chet Atkins Roundup. Okay. I think is 
I mean, you try to get tars about, every week, though. So yeah. <laughs> it's coming here with something new every every other Friday. You have to play. You have kept that Gretsch for a longer than most. Uh, uh, that's so. You guys keep it. I mean, very rock and roll, vintage. There's no oh, processing. Yeah. There's no pedal. There's pedals, but there's no like effects processor. Uh, no, no, no. Jay like all the pedals Jay uses is like the old like. The little old, Ibanez yeah, mini old school uh, uh, analog, analog delays. delays and yeah. that was, that's cool. What's the country pedal you use? Uh, a phase nine EMXR phase uh, nine. I call it a country pedal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, Waylon and all that <laughs> phase going on. Well, that's cool. And did you, you use phase on the album? Did you, did I did. You, well, that was a phase ninety. Yes, that's sir. Cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, the tones on the record ended up being. I mean, it's you played it. We we talked about this before. You you recorded the album live. Yeah, and the, that was, going in, that was a conscious decision. You wanted to just yeah. set up mm. and be what you guys are, out playing somewhere else. That's right. what you want to do. Yeah, and it and it happened. That was pretty cool. I mean, it, the vocals uh, was live, and uh, we the, one or some one song you went to the vocal I went to the vocal room. I think you might. I think we might have like literally overdubbed like two, make one part on the yeah. whole thing. So yeah. yeah, so those takes are you guys in the room yeah. looking at each other, no headphones, <coughs> no click, right. just rock and roll. The yeah. way it was done for the first forty <laughs> right. years, you know. Yeah. So. When That's all the cool. bad music was made. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean the vibe the the vibe that you get when you're just all looking at each other trying to record, it's it's so hard to capture if you're like in separate rooms and that whole mm-hmm. thing. We have a lot of bands it. come in the studio and you know, you have two different thoughts about it. You've got they want to do it live and try to that or they're like want to just be so robotic and send yeah. the bass player mm-hmm. only. You know, for one session, he's just sitting there making sure everything oh, is man. directly on meter. And then when it all, when you're done, you can just tell that it's so so much, together. So much yeah. more fun too, playing live. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just being there, and and if he, if Cody just really, you know, if he's hitting the cymbals harder, you're going to hit the chords harder. You know, right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. And, it's all about connection. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> And you, you even sang uh, the background vocals live, right? We kept, we matched you up on the drums, yeah. and, and you just knocked it out. That's pretty cool. That's fun to do that way. And I see more bands wanting to try to do that. Yes. Especially in your own genre, you know, trying to stay there. Do you guys, uh, so locally, you, where, do you, where, does, uh, where does the Moondogs play? Where does a band like this play somewhere? Uh, well, we've not really, this is kind of our first hoorah, so we've, we're playing at Summit City on uh, April 7th. And then we're playing Hillbilly Days, April nineteenth. Yeah. At eight o'clock. Eight p.m. And we're gonna try to play. I, uh, we're gonna play locally in March somewhere. But as soon as, I mean, you know, I mean, well, we'll be playing some at City. We're the next two months. We're gonna crank it up. So. Well, so, has a, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was just gonna say. So the set. I mean, you, you're. It's there. If you could. If you get the gig to play an hour and a half, you're ready to go and just go crazy? Um, yeah, I'd say we got an hour and a half down easy. Cool. We got three hours. Yeah, we got <laughs> hour and a half down, three hours we thought his co- <laughs> We thought his uh, cousin what we wanted to do, and he's like, man, I went and seen Bruce Springsteen. He didn't play that long. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we got, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we've got enough to play. De- definitely like a two-hour, uh, you know, full right. Full thing, so full we we on. we really well. I've been playing. Uh, well, you know me for forever. So me and Cody's been playing for a long time. So I think we kind of had the advantage of knowing how much work needs to go in before yeah. there's really even a point to start. You know, so that's good. I mean, we went about a year's probably. Yeah, yeah. hashing it out, seeing mm-hmm. what works, no And then the, there's a whole second part of that when you start playing there's, live. There's 18 parts. Yeah, really. but you find out which songs don't work live. Isn't that strange? Yeah, yeah. That, you know, it's really a weird thing the way yeah. the crowds are and and just dynamics of songs. Oh, for right. sure, for sure. Well, that's cool. I'm excited to check you guys out. Out, uh, live and and all that. That's what we, you're calling uh, the song that we're gonna that you would be pushing or would be a single is "Come On." Right? Come on, yeah. And uh, we That'd talked the about first song. That, that. I love the song. It's so catchy. It's so I don't know. I called it acid rock. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds stupid. That sounds stupid, but it really sounds. No, that's like, cool. That's cool. Man. I mean, I don't even know if that's a genre anymore. But it's just the background vocals, the melody, just the sing along thing. 
I mean, and it's weird because it's rock and roll. It's good chords and all that. But like I'm jamming it at the house, you know, when I when we I mixed it and I just had it playing on my stereo to see if there's anything sticking out. And my wife's, you know, Terry's in the kitchen singing it. What is really stereotyped her, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> my wife in the kitchen. <laughs> singing it. Singing it. Playing drum. <laughs> but she's, you know, but she's in there singing it. And uh, and uh, after like the 50th time I played it, though, she, she did tell me to quit. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would do that. I would, I, would, I would do that as well, for sure. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys coming in for the the very first episode of the IndyCast. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for having us. Yeah, and it's uh, going to be fun. I can't wait to hear you guys this uh, this summer. I mean, I'm sure you'll be playing everywhere. Oh, for sure, for uh, sure. As far as if somebody wants to check you out online, the typical stuff, you got the Facebook going. We got Facebook going right now. We don't have an Instagram yet. Uh, yeah. But we we pretty much I mean we've got the Facebook going we've got probably six or seven hundred followers right now but we've intent well I mean we've been um, the C D we've right. been trying to yeah. wait to get it going so yeah. once the CD's out uh, well, once you get a hold of it it's gonna probably gonna be uh, iTunes Google Play oh for sure oh a hundred percent a hundred percent yes 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 That's it'll true. all be it'll definitely be, it'll on be everywhere it'll be everywhere so everybody needs to go check it out everybody but everywhere but Walmart <laughs> 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 the only place that- well, that sounds pretty good, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> we, never, we never told the story of why it was take two. Oh, well, <laughs> the reason, yeah, the reason that uh, we're kind of laughing about a few things because we did this uh, this episode one two days ago, was it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, our good buddy Matt there, we didn't realize it, he didn't realize it, but he had a cu- uh, bottle in his hands and he was just crinkling it in front of that microphone the entire time anarchy yeah it was crazy so i get i start editing it and uh, all i could hear was that i thought the speakers were blown i was like what is that noise <laughs> so that's why we're kind of laughing about the whole thing this is take two of episode one <laughs> <laughs> hey i appreciate you all uh coming and doing this and oh yeah uh, no problem. problem all right the moon dogs everybody go check them out thank you bro you guys appreciate, appreciate so much.